Well, good morning. Welcome uh, to Higher Hope. Uh, we're glad that we're worshiping again together, and we're in this series called Deep Roots. And uh, this is our um, the beginning part of a journey of us describing um, what our vision of discipleship is. What, what is what is God doing in our life? And it's it's really this picture of the tree, and uh, part of the tree is 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 really growing into maturity, becoming all that God has called us to be. It's it's about fruitfulness. It's about health. It's, it's about when the storms come, um, be able to stand strong and still not fall. Um, and the biggest part of the tree, the most important part of the tree, are the roots. Uh, but I wanted, I wanted to kind of um, kind of frame this morning for you. Um, there, there has been lots of ways that, that watching uh, television has changed over the years. Um, a few, a while back, what you would do is you take your remote, well, and there's, there's precursors to this, but you take your remote and you'd go click, 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 and you, you'd click around the whole way and you end up in the same spot and you're like, nothing's on. I don't know if you've ever done that, you know, and, and so you'd be like, watch, there's like 12 news networks, there is like five kids show, kid uh, TV show areas, there is like the main networks, there is like 12 sports networks, there is like 500 stations total, and you click, and I don't know if you ever does, you click, lots of voices, lots of, lots of opportunities, lots of chances, lots of like things you could watch, and yet you get to the end of the whole journey, you go all the way through, and you say this, there is nothing on. Uh, lots of, let me just change it, so it, it's kind of gone from that to streaming, um, and the, unless you're in the middle of what they call binge watching an episode, this is what we do at our house. We go, I don't know if you click, I don't know if you hear a click, but slide, 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 down, 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 slide, 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 down, up, down, up, cross over, in, out. And then you still, get, we always get to the point of saying the same thing, especially if there's multiple people in the room. There is nothing on all these choices, all these opportunities, all these voices coming at us. And there's nothing. I was uh, driving to Harrisburg um, on a Sunday, um, just a few Sundays ago. And so um, there's these things called radios in the car. And, and so I'm like, there's football on. It was like, well, the first week of football, I'm like, I'm going to listen to a game while I drive. And so I'm driving through Williamsport and all that down to Harrisburg. And I'm going, seek, 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 seek. And so I'm going country music, five stations. Hard Rock, one station, Soft Listening, another station, Talk Radio, another station, and I'm going click, 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 you know, and I, all these choices, and none of them are what I want. I went to FM, and I went to AM, and so I have, like, Conservative Talk Radio, and, and Democratic Talk Radio, and we, and we have, like, whatever, News Talk Radio, and then we have, like, I don't know, it was like, and then I finally found it, and I was, like, so excited, guess what happened? I lost it as all of a sudden another voice came on over top of the football game. And I don't know if you ever do this. My wife hates this when I do this. I'm listening to a sports game and I'm like listening and it's starting to crackle and it's starting, but I can still hear it a little bit, but I'm still dry. I'm going to keep it on as long as I can because I want, and then you can hardly hear it, but you're because you know, if you leave it, you can never find it again. And so, and so you have all these voices, all these opportunities. And what, what we're at this morning is, as we're talking about roots, the foundational roots are spending time in God's Word. Like this is His um, letter to us, and, and we want to root ourselves in this book on who He is, what He desires for us. We, we want to root ourselves in prayer that God has designed us um, to, to communicate with Him. And, and last week, one of my favorite um, messages that we've done in a while, it, it was walking through, not, not just talking about prayer, but giving you opportunities to pray and to seek him and, and walk through some, some pieces of that. And this morning is one that's going to be kind of weird for a lot of people. Because you kind of get the idea that, that we have this book, and it's an amazing book, and, and we love this book. And you also kind of, most everyone talks, knows prayer. And even people who may not believe in God will at times, when they get to the lowest of lows, end up casting a, a, something up to heaven and say, God, help me, save me, rest. I'm, I'm in this tough spot. And even... Uh, they'll, they'll say, at least if there is a God, maybe he'll listen. But this one's tougher because if you, as we walk through history, 
this has been a been abused and like people have kind of thought bad. So so we can talk to God. But a lot of people think that God will not or should not or does not talk to us. God does not speak to us. And I, I just think this is one of those things that we need to root ourselves in. Is, is we want to root ourselves foundationally in the word of God. We want to root ourselves in prayer. But I want us, as we're following him, I, I believe that we need to, to start listening to his voice and stepping in that direction. I, I believe that God is a God who speaks. I believe that God is a God who speaks in the Old Testament through dreams and visions and a whole, angels and, and um, like God would show up in someone's life. And I think he speaks in the New Testament and today probably in some different ways. But I think that God just still desires to speak. If you have your Bibles, whether at home or here, turn to John chapter 10. Um, John chapter 10. And I would encourage you, anytime that we have a message, use your Bibles, because I, I think it's, it's nice to be able to underline things that God is, is showing you, revealing to you. And John 10 is a special uh, chapter, and really there's a verse in there that we use um, fairly often, and probably you're like, do you ever use a different verse than this one verse? But, but it's kind of our um, vision verse, it's our theme verse for Higher Hope, is John 10.10, 10, which I want to share with you, but it's not really the thrust of the message this morning. The, the, the theme verse is, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Okay, stop. Think about the tree. Think about fullness. That Christ has come for our fullness that there are a lot of other voices and a lot of other things happen in our world that are, are coming to steal and kill and destroy the things that God wants to do in their life. But Jesus says, I have come that, that you can have fullness, that you can have fruitfulness, that you can be mature, that you can grow into all that God has designed you to be. In fact, this theme falls in line with Paul, who says in Colossians that we have been given fullness in Christ, that he wants our maturity. All right, so this is the centerpiece of, of this story that we're talking about this morning, John 10. And so if you go back to John chapter 9, and it's not going to be on the screen, um, but what happens in John chapter 9 is there's this blind man who, who has been blind from birth, and his disciples ask Jesus, um, Jesus, did they sin? Did, did this guy sin or his parents sin? Because the popular theology of the day was, if you had something bad happening to you, it was because of sin directly in your life, whether it's your parents' sin or your sin. And they're like, hey, Jesus, we have a question. He's been blind since birth, and since it's from birth, maybe his, his parents have sinned, or maybe he has sinned. And Jesus basically says, no, it's so that the glory of God can be revealed in him, because I want to do something amazing today. So he heals him. And the Pharisees and the, the teachers of the law and the spiritual leaders of that day watch this and say, Jesus, that, why, you can't do that. You, you can't. They, they investigate the healing and then if you have, do you guys have um, like titles in um, your Bibles? Like there, there's kind of like, that's not necessarily from God, but it's, it's a way for us to understand the, the different storyline. Uh, let, me, let me back up a little bit. The Gospel of John, as, a, as many books are, are not necessarily always written chronologically, like as in a full history. In fact, John says, if I would give you the full history, it'd be, it would cover a library of stuff that God has, Jesus has done. And so John basically says, I have, I've written pieces of this so that for a purpose. And so it'd be kind of like if I would say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove to you that, um, oh, Derek Jeter is a, is a great baseball player. All right. I wouldn't necessarily talk about his birth or his upbringing. I would talk about maybe his 3,000 hits. So, so my story or my paper or my book would be written to prove that. Are you following me? That's how John is written. John is saying all right, I'm not going to give you the whole the whole story. Like this is not an autobiography or a biography of Jesus. This is this is theological. This is this is showing you who he is, and I'm walking you a journey to teach you about Jesus and that he has eternal life. That's one of the themes, and that he is the great I am. Another theme of John, and so G John pulls out this miracle of Jesus healing this blind man, and he puts it in this this um circle of teaching theology, teaching something that's important for his readers to understand. 
And he gets to this section starting in verse 35, and the, the word that's on top of it, the, the, the header, says spiritual blindness. And so what you'll find is that, that they're, they're working with um, the Pharisees and Sadducees, and, and Jesus basically says that, that they're not seeing. I, I'm walking through this, Jesus says, I'm walking through this, um, this earth, and these spiritual leaders aren't, they're, they're blind. They don't get it. They don't see correctly. There's, there's like lenses over, there's like, blind, they have blind spots to who I am. There's a spiritual blindness to the fact that I am God. And they keep attacking Jesus and then kind of dis, try to disprove Jesus. And he says, no, you're, you're just, you're blind. And in fact, what, what's beautiful about John is he goes back almost to saying in Isaiah, those seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not hear. Because what happens next is Jesus goes from spiritual blindness to not being able to hear. And so let's go to John chapter 10. We'll start in verse 1. Verily, truly, very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the, um, by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. All right, so the picture is um, a, a, a herd of sheep, and this shepherd, and um, they're in the gate. Uh, there's a gate, and there's a pen that they're in. All right. He says, "Verily I say to you, that a thief and a robber they climb. They don't come in through the main door. Like if someone's going to break into your house, they may break the main door. But sometimes they they usually break through a window. They're, the thief and robber does not like have the key, open up the door, walk in, say, hey, 'Hey, I'm home,' and the dog comes in and greets you. The thief and robber comes in. They sneak in and they they kind of go around the corners and try to to break in." The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, hear this. This is, this, is a theological, this is a theme in the Old Testament. Think about this for a second. When Jesus talks about this idea of the sheep of the shepherd, guess where he's referring to? Probably a piece of it's in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The God is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He, he leads me beside quiet water. He restores my, sh- my soul. Um, and, and there's a lot more. And he says, Guess what? I am the good shepherd. I am, I am I'm the one they're talking about in Psalm 23. Um, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep, listen to this, this is the part. The sheep listen to his voice. And you will see that John 10.10 10 is in the front of it and in the back of it is themed with this idea of the sheep listen to the shepherd. The, the sheep, li- we, if, if, if Jesus is your shepherd, that one of the key pictures of, of him being your sheep, one of the key principles of uh, finding abundant life, fullness of life, is this idea of listening to the voice of Jesus and knowing. This is what it says. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep Listen to his voice. All right, let me go back to our um, analogy in the beginning. With all the, we live in a world of all these voices. And I, I think, I feel it. Do you feel it all? You have, no, you have politics and you have like school issues. You have like family stuff going on. You, ha, you have all, you have all these things, that you, all these podcasts you can listen to and, and all these books you can listen to and all these books you can read. There's, there's millions and billions of books out there. There's, there's all sorts of television and YouTube videos and, and Twitter things to follow and Facebook to, to scroll through and Snapchats and all, you know, you have all these things that you can tie into and all these voices that are, that are yearning for you. Do you know that social media is specifically designed to get you to keep scrolling, right? Isn't that, that's what they are trying to do. And so there's this voice and he said, in the midst of all these voices, don't lose the main voice, which is the great shepherd. Because all the other voices are there as thieves and robbers to, to really long-term kill, steal, and destroy what God wants to do in your life. So he said, in the midst of all this noise, in the midst of all these radio stations, in the midst of all that you have going on in your life, stop and listen for the main voice who's going to lead you to abundance. Because a lot of us kind of either drift through life or we try to find our own path and it isn't possible that the great shepherd 
is the one that kind of leads it. Listen to what it says next. And I love this part. Um, verse 3. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. You know, it's not like uh, you walk through a Kmart a few years ago and they say, uh, aisle three, there's a blue light special. Come and, you, you know, you, you have the light showing and all that. It's not like a general announcement. God doesn't do general announcements very often. What he does say is his voice says your name. Like when you come into worship, you're not listening to a sermon. What, what I hope that eventually you get to is, Lord, I want to hear from you because you have something to say to me. And it may have nothing to do with what I'm saying. It may have nothing to do with the music. It may be one word that he says to you. It may have, have some thought that comes into your mind. But that thought, that, that, that word is more important than whatever else happens on the stage. God's voice is the most critical piece to doing what God wants us to do. And he says, he calls you by name. Think about this. In the Old Testament, whenever he came to someone, he always called them by name. In fact, he usually said it twice. Because just in case they didn't hear it the first time, Moses, Moses. He, didn't, he wasn't setting up the burning bush as a blue light in Kmart. Anyone walking by, there's a sale, uh, there's an opportunity to lead the people. of No, he set it up right where Moses was uh, walking, at least distance-wise. He can see it, and, his, and he gets close. He's like, Moses, Moses. Like, he set it up for Moses. He has a direct word for Moses. And then there's a story going on. Samuel, when he was younger, was sleeping, and he kept hearing his his name, Samuel, Samuel. And he goes to, to Eli and says, Eli, did you call my name? Uh, no, go back to bed. You must be dreaming. Again, it happens. Did you call my name? No. Third time, he's like, maybe it's God saying your name. He didn't want Eli. I mean, he already had, had, had spoken probably to Eli at times. He had a, a, something special to say to Samuel. And I just believe that God knows each of you in here. He doesn't just speak to me. He doesn't just speak to, to leaders. He, he, he says, I, if you're his sheep, if, if, you're, if, if he's your leader, you know, you, and we, we use today, we use that word, you're a sheep. You know, and I, I just want, back in those days, it didn't have a bad connotation. It, it meant leadership. It meant you were, you, you were cared for. You were loved by somebody. You were, you were protected by someone. It wasn't like you're following a blind. It, it, was, it was something that was a beautiful picture of safety and, and like um, pursuit of and, and, and rescuing from. And, and he, says, he says, by name. And he leads them out. Or that voice, when he speaks, is a voice of leadership. It's a voice of, and I would say he says one of three things to us and maybe two or three of the things all at once, it, when he speaks, it's going to be something about who he is, who we are, or what he wants us to do. And so, so he's leading us in that direction. He wants us, us to know who he is. So like to Abraham, he says, I'm the God, I, or to Jacob, he says, I'm the God of Abraham and Isaac. This is who I am. To Moses, he says, I'm the God of your fathers. I am the great I am. I am who I am. He, he usually introduces them. This is who I am. And he also speaks who you are. You are my son, whom I love. You, you are treasured. You, sometimes what we need is not necessarily the next step in the journey. We need to know who we are and pray, that he loves us no matter what step. You, like, we're valued by him. And so he'll speak that, that word into our life. The third part is he sometimes shares where, what he wants us to do next. In fact, one of his favorite words is, go. My son, a couple years ago, that was his word for the year. Go. It's, just, it's a two-letter word. But sometimes, that's the very word he, he says, go. Sometimes to a place I'll show you. You don't know exactly where it's going to be. And sometimes he says, go to this place. Do this. And so we see him leading us in the midst of, of his, his being the great shepherd. Um, when he is, verse uh, 4, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. All right. Do you, do you hear the theme as it leads up to John 10.10? 10? His voice is a huge piece 
to his leadership. We have to be listening to his voice. Then he says in verse 7, Verily, truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. There's that, that word listened again. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Um, then verse 10, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Now, this next section is all about the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Underline that. Circle that. Because at the center of this, this journey is knowing who's speaking. It is not someone, a friend. It is not a news person. It's not even the closest relationship you have in your life. It's not even your wife or your husband. It is the good shepherd. Notice that they put the word good in there because he is caring and he, he has a, a journey for you and he, he does love you. The good shepherd, here it goes, keep going. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He loves you that much. He, he is not trying to steal from you. He's trying to lead you to life. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not uh, own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. He's not leaving you. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. He's saying, listen, I, part of this listening, part of his voice is knowing him. Not just knowing about him, but knowing intimately what Jesus wants um, for us. I'm going to jump over to verse 27. Uh, start in verse 26. I don't know what to do for 27. My sheep, here we go again, listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Do you, do you hear? Surround, John 10.10 is in the middle of this section. And surrounding John 10.10, which I think is critical, Jesus says, and really John's teaching this as the writer, that in order to get to abundant life, we have to listen to his voice. We have to, we have to hear him. And, and all of a sudden, there's a bunch of people who think we're all crazy now. Like, crazy people hear from God. And then they hear crazy things from the crazy God. And then I just want to walk through a little bit, real quickly. How do we listen to God? How, how do we root ourselves in that? Number one is this. We have to seek his voice. His voice is not loud. It is not um, going to shout. In fact, a lot of times his, his voice is a whisper that we need to, like, seek. Like, if we don't seek it, we won't hear it. Because everything else can round it out. It's almost like that, that football game that has the crackling and it has the other, other station and all of a sudden you hear music behind it. You have to train your ear to listen to it. We, we, need, we need to train our ear. We need to say, in some ways, we have to turn off the other voices. Here's, here's the second part of that. We, ha we have to have silence sometimes. God speaks in silence. When we get away, when we turn off the radio, you know what? I know this is not real sound. You know where, when I find that my soul best hears from God? On my lawnmower. Because it's the one place where my, my like, there's no other sound besides the lawnmower. I'm, I'm watching these straight lines happen, and I feel like God meets me on my lawnmower. It's not, it's not the lawnmower. It's, it's, it's the silence of finally allowing God to, to speak into my life. Um, listening to God also means waiting. So many times, this is, this is how we do it. And this is why we get frustrated sometimes. We have a question for God. God, I have this job opportunity. Do you want me to take it or not? And then we're like, hurry up. Hurry up, God. Come on, God. God, I need the answer now. I, I'm seeking your will, but I need that you... See, I believe this, all right? that God withholds his answers sometimes for us because he knows that once we get the answer, we stop seeking him. And he values your relationship with him more than what you do. Does that kind of make sense? So if he just told you what to do, 
you leave him, you do it, and you no longer seek him till the next thing that you need him to answer. When he removes that answer for a while, guess what we do? We keep coming back, or we should be keep coming back. God, I love you. I, I, I just, I want to do your will. And I, my whole heart is submitted before you. I'm waiting for you. And we just wait, and we wait, and we wait. And as we wait, we develop this connection and intimacy that he deeply desires. And so we can't move on so fast. Um, confirming. I've heard a lot of people that use this God said to me in a way that's manipulative and you're like, God didn't really say that. Like, we, ha- we have, we, we can't just do this emotionally. We can't just say, I feel like God, God yeah, that was, that, that, my emotions tell me that's what God said. We have to confirm what, God, what we feel like God may be saying and, and look for it in different ways. Number one is this. We look for it, obviously, in this book. If it is, if this is not connected to this book, if, if it's if it's against this book, listen, if you ever hear someone say, God told me to have an affair, I'm just going to tell you straight out that God did not tell you that that's a thief and a robber. Because that is not truth. God told me to do this. And you're like, no way, there's no way, because it's not a court. You cannot have God say something that, that's, not in, like, that's contrary to this. And so if it is that, then you automatically have to say that's not God. Um, another way we do that is we look at Jesus. Um, Hebrews 1.3 says this, that in the past God spoke through visions, dreams, through the prophets in various times and various places, but now he has spoken through Jesus. And so maybe some of the, the, the ways you can walk that is, did Jesus do that? Would Jesus do that? And not just the way we feel like Jesus would do it, but really, again, we're going back into the book, how did Jesus live his life? Because that's, that's his word, and there's, there's a solidness to that. Um, another way that you can confirm it is through people. Now, be very careful with this one, because Satan can use good people who don't even know it in a way to stop you from following God's word. But God can also use people to confirm the very thing he wants to, to do in your life. And so how are people, especially people who are close to you, who you trust spiritually, confirming what God is saying to you? Um, another one is God echoes. You ever, you ever notice how God echoes things to confirm it? Like you'll hear it um, here, and then you'll, you'll hear it maybe um, on a podcast someplace, or you, you'll, you'll read something and be like, God, I, just, I just heard that. And then it will, it will show up. It's almost like you buy a new car, and it, that car shows up like all over the place after you bought it. No, you guys never bought a car like that, did that? Okay, well, it happens, right? All of a sudden, there's like 12 of those cars in horse heads. There was, never that, there was never that many before you bought it, but now there is. And so you're looking for those confirmations like, all right, where else do I see God showing up in this way? Let, let me just wrap up by saying this. I don't believe there is anything that that changes our course faster, that is more transformative, that that, that just throws our life in a different direction than the Word of God. Every time God, God speaks, sometimes our life gets thrown into upheaval and He changes a direction. It's transformative. As much as a wedding or having a baby is transformative, like it changes the course of your life. When I look in Scripture and when I look at my life, His Word changes the course of our lives. You know, there's a story that I mentioned earlier about Samuel. And there's there's a phrase that um, Eli tells him to, to, to share when God speaks or when he desires he's seeking God to speak and it's this speak Lord for your servant is listening no 
what he does is he turns off all the other voices. <clears throat> all the other things shouting out. He's like, all right, Lord. My eyes are fixed on you. Your servant. I'm going to respond. I'm going to, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to step in that direction. Is listening. You know, I just want to encourage you. For some of you in here and online, you're like, God has never spoken to me. You know why we do one word? Uh, one word, obviously, is a, it's something we do in January where we ask people to choose a word um, that God can use in their life. Because I believe that that's a tool, also a way to learn how God speaks. Because all of a sudden, you know, you're like, I don't know what my word is. I don't know what my word is. I don't know what, what, where God wants to do. And we're seeking him and we're waiting. And all of a sudden, we don't even know how it happens. But we know God gave us a word. That's God speaking. You know, I remember a time when I was uh, trying to decide whether to start, move back to this area and start a church. And I was uh, kind of in a room like this. And I was sitting down. And there were... There, there, there was, it was at a camp. And so, you know, I'm sitting here and I am, there's a speaker that's going to speak and there's a worship team that's, that's leading worship. And in the midst of all these voices that are good voices of, of like worship and, and admiring God and that someone's sharing something, in the middle of it, it had nothing to do with what's going on around. I, there was no, th- th- so you know, there was no audible voice. There was no fireworks. There was no like, um, like specific phrase that he said. There's no like this huge thought. It was like this confirmation from the Holy Spirit that said, in my words, plant the church. You know, I'm sitting there. There's people sitting all around. They have no idea that God's speaking to me. They have no idea that, that I, that's a confirmation of what I had been wrestling with for a year. They, have, they don't know any of that, but in the midst of a moment of worship, in the midst of, of all this other noise, God speaks. And my prayer is, whether it's here, or whether it's um, while you're driving, or whether it's on, your, on a lawnmower, whether it's a big word, like it's life-altering, like you're moving someplace, or it's, it's, a, it's a daily word today of like, you need to lead into this relationship, that you hear God speak. And that not only do you hear God speak, but you step into it and see what God has for you through it. Because God's word, when he speaks, is powerful. You know, I, again, I go, to many, I go to conferences, and my one prayer is, God, I don't want a lot of ideas. I want a word from you. One word, one idea, one thought, but let me hear from you. That, that's as we root ourselves, as we see God do amazing things, as we, as we want abundant life, may we seek his word more than we seek our own will for our life. May we just try to listen to what he has for us. Let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you are a God who speaks. The very first act of creation was your word. And you have spoken to your, the people who have walked with you, whether it's Abraham or Isaac or Moses. And God, I, I still believe you speak. Although it's hard sometimes to, to decipher the voice um, But your Holy Spirit was a gift to us to hear from you. That you can impress things on us. That you can teach us. That you can reveal yourself to us. So God, we don't necessarily just want to do religion. We don't want to go to church just to go to church. We don't want to watch something just to watch something. We don't want to fill our lives with so many voices that it it drowns out your voice. We want to hear from you. We want to say, speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. So God, I pray that you speak.